Hello students, welcome to the class Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. Okay, so what is the statement of Fundamental Theorem of Algebra? If Pz is a non-constant polynomial, Pz is a non-constant polynomial, polynomial, then there is a complex number A. There is a complex number, there is a complex number A such that p of a equal to 0 so which is the statement of fundamental theorem of algebra p z a non constant polynomial aanengil theerchayittum adinu or zero engilum undavum evade complex plane il undavum so every non constant polynomial will have a zero complex zero okay so how will you prove this very very important and very simple to prove so let p z be a non constant polynomial p z be a non constant polynomial okay so assume that if pz is non not equal to 0 for every z in c that means suppose p has no zeros okay p ki zeros illa p does not have any zeros now nah, nah, assumption then let fz is equal to so that i am going to define one a new function fz is equal to 1 by pz okay since pz is non zero pz in zero silathadu kondu then fz is analytic well defined and analytic function analytic function for every z in c so when a function is analytic in every point of c that is called an entire function so which implies fz endavum fz is an entire function fz is an entire function okay ready then okay then in the previous video we have proved that if pz is non-constant polynomial non-constant polynomial uh, then it is actually since pz is non-constant polynomial it is non-constant analytic function when a function is non-constant and analytic analytic then we proved that limit uh, set limit set tends to infinity pz will be equal to c uh, actually infinity limit set tends to infinity pz will go to infinity that means pz cannot be bounded so which implies when pz is tends to infinity limit set tends to infinity 1 by pz will goes to 0 when a function goes to infinity or set tends to infinity then its reciprocal will be goes to 0 right so which implies limit set tends to infinity what is 1 by pz 1 by pz is defined to be fz that is uh, that is tends to 0 so limit set tends to infinity fz is equal to 0 means that function fz is bounded fz is bounded bounded and entire function so by Liouville's theorem when a function is bounded entire that will be constant right so which implies by Liouville's theorem by Liouville's theorem Liouville's theorem piece fz is constant fz is constant which implies fz is equal to 1 by pz is constant when 1 by pz is constant pz is constant pz is constant which is a contradiction because pz is a non-constant analytic function non-constant polynomial therefore which is a contradiction that means there will exist at least one point set such that pz is equal to zero that means pz has at least one zero in complex plane now what is the corollary of fundamental theorem of algebra it says that if pz is a polynomial suppose pz is a polynomial so we will start with the proof let pz be a polynomial okay and this polynomial have the property that a1 a2 etc am are the zeros a1 a2 etc am are the zeros of the function of the polynomial pz with the multiplicity kgs okay then pz can be factorized as c into z minus a1 raised to k1 etc z minus a1 raised to km was k where c is a constant and k1 k2 etc km are the multiplicities then there's some k1 plus k2 plus etc plus km is the degree of p set okay how will you prove this so given that uh, 
given that a1 a2 etc am are the zeros are the zeros of p set with the multiplicity with the multiplicity k1 k2 etc km okay then p set generally p set can be written when we have some zeros with multiplicity k1 etc km then clearly it can be written z minus a1 raised to k1 z minus a2 raised to k2 etc z minus am raised to km into some function q set like that means uh, if z minus a a1 is a factor of the polynomial p set then we can divide that polynomial by the factor z minus a1 then uh, you know the by division algorithm which is just a consequence of division algorithm if p set is a polynomial and z minus a is a factor is a factor then we can divide p set by z minus a then if you divide p set by z minus a then we will get a uh, we will get two corresponding polynomials such that you can write uh, this equal to some uh, yeah, q z into z minus a plus some r z where q z and r z are the corresponding okay so this will be reminder function and this will be quotient function quotient function okay so every polynomial can be written like this right when z minus is a factor then reminder function will be equal to zero therefore p z can be written q z into z minus a plus zero that is this format right so using this idea p z can be factorized as z minus a1 raised to k1 z minus a2 raised to k2 etc z minus a m raised to km into some function that is a quotient function q z okay q z okay and we need to prove that p z have this representation that means this q z is nothing but c that means this polynomial q z is a constant function so we will prove that q z is constant Q z is a constant function. Okay, so how will you prove this? By contradiction method. So suppose not. Suppose not. That is, Q z is a is not a, a constant function. Not a constant means non-constant polynomial, right? That is, Q z is a non-constant polynomial in complex plane C. Therefore, by Liouville's theorem, oh, I'm sorry, the therefore by fundamental theorem of algebra fundamental theorem of algebra fundamental theorem of algebra this non-constant polynomial q z will have a zero q z has a zero let it be a a the okay therefore q of a will be equal to zero right a is the zero of q z therefore q of a equal to 0 when q of a equal to 0 see q z is a factor of p z right therefore q of a will be the factor of p z right therefore what will happen q, since q of a equal to 0 what will happen what is p of a p of a equal to uh, z minus a 1 raised to k 1 etc etc z minus a m raised to k m into q z that is z equal to a q a so that will become 0 right so we get p of a equal to 0 so when p of a equal to 0 means a is a zero of p z a is a zero of the polynomial p z and we have assumed that the zeros of p z are a1 a2 etc am there are only m zeros for the function p z therefore this a must be equal to one of this a right so which implies a must be equal to a i for some for some I equal to 1 to etc m since p z has only zeros only zeros a1 a2 etc am okay so which implies p z can be written z minus a1 raised to k1 etc etc z minus am raised to km into actually q z and here I have to write a QZ but instead of QZ I can write what is QZ it is a zero of PZ right 
so I have to write some set minus a i raised to sorry set minus a i into some q one set. Shirele because this q z has a factor a and this a is equal to some a i this may be any i from one to etc m okay so this q z uh, this q z caution function q z can be written z minus a i into q one z therefore this z minus a i will be club up to i th term of z minus a i raised to k i okay so this polynomial will be rewritten as therefore p z can be written z minus a1 raised to k1 etc etc z minus some ai raised to ki plus 1 z minus ai raised to ki uh, ki plus 2 etc z minus ai raised to km into q1 z okay okay so which implies what about the ah uh, the 0 ai has the multiplicity ki plus 1. So, this is some kj. Not I write ki plus 2. It is some kj. Okay. So, uh, which implies the 0 ai. a the multiplicity was ki. Here the multiplicity of ai is ki plus 1. So, multiplicity of the 0 ai is increased by 1. Right. So, it is not possible because the multiplicities are exactly k1 k2 etc km we can't increase that right so which implies multiplicity multiplicity of z equal to ai in the polynomial pz is ki plus 1 which is a contradiction which is a contradiction therefore therefore qz must be constant qz is a constant function constant function therefore pz has the exact form so take qz equal to some c then pz can be written c into z minus a1 raised to k1 etc etc z minus am raised to km so if we can return pz like this then what will be the degree of P, uh, pz so constant in the degree degree of a constant function is zero right so what is the degree of p set zero plus k1 plus etc plus km right therefore degree of uh, p set equal to actually constant function degree of constant function is zero one k1 k2 etc km and that is exactly equal to sum of the multiplicities k1 k2 etc km okay actually we can prove one more result from the fundamental theorem of algebra the result says that if pz is a non-constant polynomial, pz is a non-constant polynomial, then given any complex number a, given any complex number a, given any complex number a, comma, there exists an element z in the complex plane such that pz will attain that value a. That is, that is a non-constant polynomial, a non-constant polynomial assume every complex number, assumes every complex number, every complex number. That is, either non-constant uh, polynomial at the end of the complex number we will substitute the complex number. That is, the complex number will exist in the value of the value. What is the value of the value? How will you prove this? Okay. So let Pz be a non-constant polynomial. Non-constant polynomial. Okay. Let A be a complex number. Any complex number. Okay. Then you consider Pz minus A. Okay. Then Pz minus A is a non-constant polynomial again. Right non-constant polynomial again okay therefore by fundamental theorem of algebra fundamental theorem of algebra fundamental theorem of algebra what you have every non-constant polynomial will have a zero in complex number so pz minus a has a zero zero set not in the complex number 
therefore pz minus a at the point z naught will be equal to 0 so what is pz minus a at the point z naught that is pz naught minus a equal to 0 we can't apply z naught in a because a is a constant term so that is equal to p of z naught is equal to a a is a complex number. If we choose arbitrary complex number A, we can find a number Z0 in C such that P of Z0 equal to A. That means the PZ attains the value A. Right? PZ attains the value A for some complex number Z0. Right? So this is true for a non constant polynomial only. Okay. Now, if we have a non-constant polynomial, any polynomial function pz, then the number of zeros of a polynomial will be finite because its degree is finite. Like, and the degree finite is one of polynomial zeros and down button choosing that will be always finite number, right? So, if you consider the trigonometric functions, uh, complex trigonometric functions, they will have infinitely many complex numbers infinitely many complex zeros actually so for example if you consider fz is equal to cos of 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z for the region mode z less than 1 okay because at z equal to 1 this function is not defined okay for we consider the region mode z less than 1 therefore this function is clearly analytic okay so what are the zeros of this function so first of all, what are the zeros of the complex trigonometric function cos z? Cos z equal to 0 when z is equal to some n pi by 2 where n is an odd integer. n is an odd integer. Right? These are the zeros of complex trigonometric function cos z. Now we have to find out what are the zeros of cos of 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z. For that I define let g z is equal to 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z. Okay? Ready. To find out what are the zeros of this function, uh, if z is equal to 0, then what will happen? Cos of 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z is equal to 0, right? So, which implies cos of z equal to 0 when z equal to n pi by 2. So, the cos of 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z equal to 0 means 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z is equal to some n pi by 2 where n is an odd integer odd integer so which is actually if and only if so which is if and only if 1 plus z is equal to n pi by 2 into 1 minus z that is if and only if z is equal to n pi by 2 minus n pi by 2 z minus this one okay so that is uh, 1 plus n pi by 2 say into z is equal to n pi by 2 minus 1 right we are club upping the terms including z and not including z so that is z is equal to n pi minus 2 divided by n pi plus 2 all the terms will be cancelled set okay so we get these values so what are the where n is an odd integer okay n is odd integer so what are the zeros of cos of 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z so which are the terms of the form n pi minus 2 divided by n pi plus 2 where n is an odd integer right so how many zeros of this zeros exist for this function infinitely many therefore cos of 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z has infinitely many zeros infinitely many zeros so anyway trigonometric function complex trigonometric functions have infinitely many zeros